Panorama TV presents Digital Photography One-on-One, -on -One, where we answer your questions. Here's your host, Mark Wallace. Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of Digital Photography One-on-One. -on -One. I'm Mark Wallace. Well, this week we're taking a look at two questions, and these have been sent in by a bunch of different people, so let's dive right in. What's the difference between Lightroom and Photoshop, and which one should I buy? Well, when I first started working on this question, I began to list the similarities and differences between Lightroom and Photoshop. You know, Photoshop does this, but Lightroom does that. And that list got to be really long, really fast, and it really didn't do a good job to help answer the question. And so I started to think maybe we should be asking a different question. I mean, just think about Photoshop. It's this amazing application that allows you to edit photos. You can make tonal changes and fix colors and retouch skin, remove dust spots, output images for the web and video, and a lot more. And I mean a lot more. You can perform advanced 3D editing and use it for painting and drawing and creating animation and doing special effects in videos and performing quantitative analysis on medical and other scientific images. And that's just scratching the surface. I mean, Photoshop has become the Superman of image editing applications. It's so powerful, it can do just about anything a creative can imagine. You can even automate things using actions and droplets, which means Photoshop can perform advanced edits and complicated output with a simple click of a button. It's almost like it's alive. So maybe a better question is, why does Lightroom exist at all? If Photoshop is so powerful and can do so much, why did Adobe create Lightroom in the first place? Well, you may think that they created Lightroom because of the price of Photoshop. Lightroom is hundreds of dollars less expensive than Photoshop, but that's not it. They created Photoshop Elements years earlier as a low-cost alternative, and they still sell Photoshop Elements today. So if price isn't the reason, what is? Well, let's go back in time a few years. Photoshop was doing just fine, and photographers and creatives loved it. Amateur photographers were using Photoshop Elements and things were groovy, but then something happened. Digital photography hit a tipping point. More and more people were shooting with digital cameras and digital cameras became very affordable and suddenly people all over the world had large collections of images with no good way to manage all of those files. Photographers needed a way to organize and work with the thousands of images that they were taking and they needed to be able to quickly do all of this stuff and get those images to clients. And clients wanted instant feedback, they wanted prints and web galleries and photos that they could share in email and on social media sites. And because image catalogs were getting so large, photographers needed a way to save space on their hard drives. Well, I'm not sure, but I'm pretty sure that Adobe named a Lightroom after two things a light table, and a dark room. Now, a light table is used to sort and choose winners. Photographers used to place negatives on a light table, and then they used something called a loop. It's sort of like a fancy magnifying glass. And they looked at those photos, and they could quickly choose winners for processing in the dark room. Now, once photographers got those negatives in the dark room, they could burn and dodge and change exposure and oversaturate image and use filters and chemicals to bring those photos to life. And of course, they'd make prints to be given to clients or hang on gallery walls. Now, at its heart, Lightroom is this wedding of a light table and a dark room. But there's a lot more to it than that. Well, now that we know why Adobe created Lightroom in the first place, let's take a closer look at the major differences between Lightroom and Photoshop. Now, Photoshop uses something called Bridge to browse folders on your computer's hard drive. And Lightroom uses catalogs, which allows you to do things a lot quicker. Sort of think of it like this, uh, like a library full of books. Imagine you wanted to find one specific book in this huge library, and there was no card catalog or Dewey Decimal System. You'd have to physically look at each book one by one until you found the book you were looking for. You'd be browsing those books. Now, that's how Bridge works in Photoshop. It allows you to look at the folders on your hard drive, but you sort of have to know where to start looking and hope that you've organized your hard drive well, sort of like the Dewey Decimal System. But Lightroom uses something called a catalog. Once again, let's think about a large library full of books. Well, that library would have a card catalog or a computer database. Instead of walking all over the place trying to find a book, you'd simply type the name of the book into a computer or look at the card catalog and you'd instantly know where the book is and you'd have a bunch of information about that book. You know, who wrote it and when they wrote it and the genre of literature, if it's checked out or not. 
And the cool thing is that book doesn't have to physically be in the library for you to get information about it. The catalog and the books are two different things that work together, and that's how Lightroom works. It has a catalog of your images, and it keeps all of the information about those images, so you can quickly search and find your assets. So let's take a quick look at how this works. I have an external hard drive connected to my computer. It's a G Drive Mini. And on that external hard drive, I have a couple of folders. One is called Lightroom Demo. And inside of that folder, I have my Lightroom catalog. This one is called Beyond the Basics Week 2. And this one, it was created for a class called Beyond the Basics. Now there's another file that's named almost exactly the same, except for it says Previews and this holds all of my image previews, which will make sense here in a minute. So this is actually my Lightroom catalog. And notice there are no images anywhere within this folder. The folder is actually somewhere else. So it's just like uh, the card catalog in a library and the books are somewhere else on a shelf. Same kind of thing. So the, the photos are actually inside of these folders here. It's uh, sorted by date, and if we go in here and look, you can see that there are a bunch of images that I shot for this class. Now, what I can do is open up this uh, Lightroom catalog, and that'll open right up in Lightroom 3. And now we can see all of the images that uh, are in that catalog. Now, the neat thing is these are actually the previews of the images. And so if I uh, had to disconnect the images or I moved that folder away or something, they'd still show up here in my Lightroom catalog and I could look at them and then I could later connect those again. So it's basically like if a book moved to a different branch of a library, it would still be in the card catalog and later you'd bring it back in and say here's where it is. So it's really nice the photos and the actual photos on the hard drive are not connected which is it takes a little while to get used to but it's a much faster way of working because you're keeping much smaller sizes. Now, the other thing that's really interesting with these files here if I go in to this I can go into some different modules here. So there's the library, the develop, slideshow, print, and web module, and they each do different things. In the library module, I can add some things to our photo here, and it's called metadata. It's information that describes something else. So if this was a book in a card catalog, the metadata would be the author and the genre and you know uh, when it was written, things like that. For a photo, that metadata are maybe keyword tags. It has um, some things that I've added automatically like the file type and where it's stored and what the dimensions are and when the original was taken and the exposure and the ISO and who uh, created this, what lens was used, and that goes on and on. There's all kinds of information here I, I can actually add. And so this, ex this metadata really helps us out when we want to search things later so we can keyword things. And if my catalog grows to be 10,000 images and I say, hey, well, I want the image of a library, I can search by all of that metadata. And so, in fact, up here I can look by uh, date or camera or lens or label, and I can choose all kinds of different things to search by. So Lightroom really allows you to quickly find the image you're looking for and then go right to town editing that image. Now, all this metadata isn't just good for keeping track of images. Lightroom also uses it to keep track of the changes you make to your images. And this is another big difference between Photoshop and Lightroom. When you edit an image in Photoshop, you're actually changing the pixels of that image. The only way around this is to make a copy of the image before you edit, and that takes up a lot of hard drive space, and you're still making edits to the pixels of the copy. So Lightroom does it differently. Lightroom saves the hard drive space by using metadata to track changes in your images. So let's take a closer look. Let's first take a look at opening a raw file in Photoshop. So I have a raw file here. I'll double click that and it opens it up into Adobe Camera Raw. And this gives me all of the, the things that I really want. I can change the color, temperature, exposure, etc. So I can do some things to this image. And then when I say open image, what's happening is it's converting that raw file to a Photoshop file, something that I can actually use. And so uh, once we go in here and you know we make some different changes, I'm not going to do any because we don't have time. But then when I'm done, I have to save this file somehow. So I can go down here and say save. And then it's going to ask me to save this as a Photoshop file. And so what I'll do is I'm going to go back here and just say I'm going to save it in my Phoenix Public Library as that uh, image. And I will say save. Now, uh, once that's saved, we can go back here to our file browser, our finder. And you can see that I have the original RAW file and I have a copy, which is my Photoshop file that takes 49 megabytes on the disk. 
Now, if I go into Lightroom and do the same thing, so here's my raw file, and I can just go into uh, my develop module here. I'm going to make this full screen. And now once I'm in my develop module, which is a built-in part of Lightroom, I can kick this screen out here and I can go in here and change exposure and color temperature and do all kinds of things to this image. And what's happening is instead of making a copy of this folder, it's just keeping track of the ways that we've changed all of these different settings and it's saving those in the Lightroom catalog. And if I go back here to uh, my finder, and I go back to where that file is saved, which is in this. You can see that there's this little file called an XMP file that I created, and it's 12 kilobytes. So for Lightroom to save this image and all the changes that you made to it, it actually just takes the file and then uh, uh, amends this XMP file, which is just a couple kilobytes instead of this huge file, which is 49 megabytes. And so that really adds up. And when you're ready to, to put this out to a, a hard drive somewhere, then you can always go in and you can say file export, and you can export that as a JPEG or a TIFF or all kinds of different things, or you can save that as a slideshow or put it on the web. There's all kinds of places to put that. But until you're ready to do that, this is gonna save you a ton of space on your hard drive. Not only does Lightroom have great editing tools, it gives you the tools to quickly publish your images. You can share on screen with a slideshow or output to a web gallery or even make prints. You can export images to your hard drive or send them to Flickr, Facebook, SmugMug, or a lot of other places. Now with the power of Lightroom, you might now be thinking, why would I ever need Photoshop? Well, as powerful as Lightroom is, it doesn't do pixel level editing or compositing. In other words, if you want to add elements to an image or combine images or retouch skin to advance layouts or integrate with a more complicated publishing workflow, you're going to need Photoshop. But there's good news. Lightroom was designed from the ground up to work with Photoshop. Lightroom and Photoshop work together as a team through a process called round tripping. Round tripping between Photoshop and Lightroom is extremely simple. In fact, you just right click on an image and then you can say edit in and then you can say Photoshop CS5. You can even uh, do this in fireworks. You can open it as a smart object. You can set up all different types of applications if you want to throw this out and do pixel level editing. Now let me show you how this works in Photoshop. So I'll just click that. It's going to take the changes that I made in Lightroom and immediately open this in Photoshop. And so it's going to come in and it's going to look exactly the same as it did in Lightroom. And so I'm going to make this full screen again. Now, if I go in here and make some changes to this, so, you know, we'll just do a, a really quick uh, filter here. We'll just liquefy this really fast. So if I'm going to go in here and, um, you know, make this do some pixel level, I don't know, we make it melty for some reason. I don't know why you do this, but let's just say we did. So I've made all these changes. Then I'll apply those changes. And then once those are all applied here, what I can do then is then just tell this to save this image. So I'll just say save and it's saving my image. Now watch what happens. Uh, I'll go in here, I'll close this file. And when I go into to my uh, Lightroom application, look at here, we have two different files. And so I'll bring the toolbar up so we can really increase the size of these thumbnails here. And you can see we have two files. We have our original file and we have our Photoshop file. You can see those side by side. So this is the original, this is the changed one. And you can see that it's automatically come into Lightroom. I didn't have to do anything special. As soon as I saved it, it automatically put it right next to the original in Lightroom. And you can see this one still says it's a camera raw file. And this one is a Photoshop file. So I didn't do anything to this file. It's non-destructive, which makes it really nice. Then I can still go in here and I can edit this again if I need to in Photoshop, or I can do all kinds of things in Photoshop. Now, it's built in to Lightroom so that these two applications work as a pair and they do it really well. Now, I could spend a lot more time talking about the differences and similarities of Lightroom and Photoshop, but we've covered the big differences today. So we've answered the first question, which is what are the differences between the two applications? But what about the second question, which is which one of these should I buy? Well, my recommendation is simple. You should buy Lightroom if you're a serious photographer. And then add Photoshop if you need the ability to, to do compositing or pixel level editing. Now before we leave, I should mention something that Adobe just announced that really makes Photoshop and other Adobe products more affordable, and it's called subscriptions. You can now subscribe to Adobe products. 
In other words, you can download their software and pay on a month-to-month -month basis for licensing. Now, if you really need a copy of Photoshop, but you only need it for a few weeks, well, just subscribe. It's like renting the software for a month. And they have a bunch of different plans, so make sure you check it out at adobe.com. Well, thanks so much for joining me today. For more photography tutorials, videos, and a wealth of information, check out the Adorama Learning Center. And if you like my videos, make sure you subscribe. Well, if you have a question about photography, send it to me. My email address is askmark at adorama.com. Well, thanks for joining us. I'll see you again next week. This episode is brought to you by Adorama TV. Visit the Adorama Learning Center where you'll find photography tips and techniques, links to the gear used in this episode, and related videos. For all the latest photography, video, and computer gear, visit Adorama.com. And the next time you're in New York City, visit our store located on 18th Street between 5th and 6th Avenue.